Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So today I'm going to talk about paper mache decanter accessories, say, okay? So this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. It's a coaster made out of paper mache. And um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to talk about. These things were popular from the sort of like late 18th century through into the early 19th century. Um, very trendy, very expensive, I think, some of them. Um, yeah, so at the time, I mean, it's paper mache. It's now become quite rare because it is paper mache. Um, if I was to put this in a bowl of water, it would be gone the next day. So yeah, only the metal fixtures and a bit of flakes of lacquer and the rest of it would just be sludge. So um, yeah, that's, as I said, it's very trendy because it's like um, it's like something made out of plastic, but it's very light, you know, so it, it's its own, it's got its own properties. They didn't have plastic, so they were always looking for substitutes for that. Um, and paper mache became very popular for a while. Uh, and they also, in addition to sort of like the things I'm going to show you, they're making tables and boxes and all sorts of stuff out of paper mache. So with that said, let's get on and I'll start showing you some things. I'll start with the, the lesser things and work my way up through the field, eh? So um, yeah, let's go with that then. So I'm going to start with the, um, this coaster. It's the only coaster I have. Um, I've got a lovely... 18th century tapered decanter in it with this lunar cut disc stopper. Anyway, so this is the one, this is how you'd use it basically like this. It's because it's a coaster. Um, I'll probably do a video on coasters because I've got a few, uh, but this is the only paper mache one I've got. It's got lion's heads on it. Can you see with little rings in their mouths? Um, this is very, this is more of an early 18th century, I think, uh, 19th century thing, I think. Um, if you remember, I was looking, when I was in Vintique, I was looking at a punch bowl in there and it had the same lion's heads uh, with a ring in their mouth. And um, yeah, but that also had William IV coins embedded in it. So that makes it sort of like 1830s. Um, this might be earlier than that, so this might be as early as, you know, um, you know, 1800, maybe a bit later. Um, and we can look at some references. There is one that's a bit like this. So, yeah. So that's the first thing we're going to be looking at. Let me just check the focus is good. Yeah, it is. So there you go. So the next thing I'm showing you is um, a decanter stand or frame, some people call them. Um, this is paper mache as well. Um, these are the decanters that came with it. I think they seem, this one's kind of loose and this one's tight. I've tried switching them around. I think the decanters are just slightly different widths, but they can, yeah. So anyway, this is what it came with. And um, yeah, we've got the stoppers and everything. So we'll get those out of the way and let's have a look at the stand itself. Because if you see the stand, it's got some value in itself because obviously if you've got a pair of decanters, you can put them on them. And um, yeah, this one's a bit knackered. And I'll show you, which gives away a bit of its origin. Because it's got a, can you see here? It's got a crack right through it. Someone's previously tried to glue it. It looks like very old school glue. So that might have been glued a hundred years ago. Um, and uh, yeah, and if you look, the, bot, the base has got like a texture to it. It's paper and it doesn't sound like wood. Yeah, because some of these stands are made out of um, plywood and it's still lacquered the same, but it is plywood. Um, but yeah, they don't have this texture. So uh, I, I have a couple and I'll do um, a video on these frames because I've got a couple of wooden ones and I've got some some um, silver plate ones as well. So we can do that as a separate video and I'll include these back in it again so we can do that comparison. Um, yeah, and you can see on the top, you can see that the, um, the lacquer has got some crackling in it. And actually you can see the crack a bit better here. But yeah, it is paper mache and it's very delicate and this is a survivor of 200 years plus. So it's kind of what you'd expect to see. 
Uh, yeah, so you might see something like this and it looks a bit, you know, not great, but this is a 200 year old thing. If you can get bottles to go in it, then it be suddenly becomes a lot more valuable. So if you see one hanging around for a tenner, or even if it's a wooden one, it's worth having it because if you then get bottles for it, it, its value goes up exponentially. So I shouldn't do that really. I'll pick it up like this. There we go. And we'll start another one. And this is by Magic, another one of Piers. Um, yeah, this is a three bottle one. Let's get these bottles out. Similar kinds of bottles. You see, so they're, yeah, similar period. Um, let's get this one out as well. Get out of the way. So yeah, and you can see underneath, remember I was telling you about the texture, the look of it. It's got that same not wood texture. And um, actually you can see underneath there, it's got bits where the lacquer's not really gone on either. Um, but this one's whole, this one does have some damage as well. That's like from water or probably wine or whiskey coming off the, um, it's probably hard, hard drinks because actually these are, these are um, spirit bottles. So it's probably like whiskey or brandy or something that's eaten into the lacquer. And then it's kind of affected that the paper mash under, underneath a little bit. Can you see? So mine are completely unrestored. Um, I'm presuming there's someone out there that could do this if you really wanted to. Um, and also these bottles came with, to help you set them in a period of early 19th century, they came with decanter rings on them. And let me show you this one. So this one, one, the decanter rings uh, are copper underneath. Yeah, so when you look at the edges very carefully, I can get this to focus on this one here. Yeah, this one, it, it says Holland's. And Holland's is um, the old world word for gin, the original, how it was described, because it came from Holland. And um, yeah, so decanter rings. If, so if you see something like this, pick it up, even if it's one, because these make good money on their own. Yeah, because compared, even if it's plate, yeah, because they're very rare compared to um, labels of plate label is worth a lot less than a plate um, decanter ring. Just thought I'd let you know that. And yeah, I've got rum and brandy and Hollands. So this is the final item I'm going to show you. It's the, the nicest thing I've got in um, paper mache. And the reason I'm doing this video is because this is new to me. I've just managed to get this. Um, and I put these, the books tell me that it's dated, the date's given 1785 to 1800. So I've put these nice tapered decanters in. Um, oh yeah, I'll show you these labels as well that are on them. These are ones where you'd put a little bit of card in. So if you had one with Bordeaux and one with Claret, where it looked the same, you could put your own little card in the back and with the name of what you've got on it. So yeah, so I'll get these out of the way. and um, show you this. It's called a jolly boat. Yeah, because, hey, hey, we've got some drinks. And uh, it's painted with grapes. Can you see? And it's painted on the coasters that are built into it and around the edge and also around the inside. Can you see here? All the way around on the inside. Um, somehow they must have painted the inside before they glued these in. I presume these are, yeah, they're glued in. I can just feel the edge. So yeah, these are glued in. Um, and yeah, when it was done, this would have been very smart. Um, you know, shiny black lacquer, bright gold, probably bright purple um, grapes in here. Uh, yeah, you can see it's got a little bit of damage for where some wine or something has got into it. Um, and I think it's probably that the, also that the bottles have worn the lacquer a bit thin there because it's lacquer of the top. It's also got a little bit of 
chipping here. And I think there's one chip underneath there, a little tiny one. So, and the ends, if you can see it focus, so the ends are a bit worn down, they should come to a point. Um, but it's made out of paper. You know, what do you expect after 200 plus years of basically painted paper crushed and squeezed, pressed together in layers? Because here it's got a little bit of delamination and you can see the layers of paper in it. So yeah, and it's very light. So yeah, it's a jolly boat it's called. These are very rare. There's a couple like this in one of my books. And um, yeah, and you, and you can see by what it says about it, but that these are a rare thing um, because a bowl of water and it would be gone. Leave it outside overnight in the rain. Yeah, it would be just gone. So, um, Yeah, so you need to look out for um, these kinds of wares because even the stands on their own, you can add value to them. It, or anybody that's got a pair of decanters can add value to them by adding decanters to them. Um, the coasters, and some of them look like this with painted on them, but this one's a bit different. Um, these have got value as well, because these are rare too. You won't see a lot of them. You might find a few on eBay at the moment, but um, yeah, I, this is the only one I've managed to get as a bargain. This was a bargain too. Everything I've got is a bargain. So um, yeah, I'm a cheapskate, but anyway, um, so that's that. So I have a few book references, a couple of book references. I'm gonna show you those um, so you know I'm not just giving you some some BS, sorry, this is me talking from my head up. So let's go and have a look at some references. So this book is um, Great British Wine Accessories by Robin Butler. And um, yeah, so you can see the um, coasters here with the ribs. He's saying these are 1790 to 1800. And then you can see there's lots of similar ones with painted designs on them. Um, none of them have got and you can see the different shaped ones. You can see the top here, rounded ones. Um, these ones have got lips on, another rounded one. There's one here with a scalloped edge. Yeah, so there's lots of different designs in the paper mache ones. Um, and he's dating all these, you know, all over the place. This one's 1815, 1850, um, 1800. There's a date on that one, can't see. Um, doesn't got a date on that one either. But that's probably an 18th century one because it's got a chinoiserie. Um, but anyway, um, it's got 1820 on that one. But anyway, that's, that's the um, coasters that I've got. So let's move on um, a few pages. So here we go. We've got a jolly boat that's a bit like mine, um, but it doesn't have tall, the one, one I have has taller coasters in it, uh, which are painted. This just has this bit. It also has a lip around the bottom, which mine doesn't have. Then you've got this one here, which is a three bottler. But it has, does have raised coasters like mine. The dates I mentioned here, 1785 to 1800. He also says something here that makes me think, you know, I don't know how, I, all I know is I've never seen a real one. I've only ever seen them here and in another book. Um, and Yes, what he says here, the author, that's Robin Butler, had this in the early 1970s, selling to a well-known London dealership. It resurfaced on the market some 35 years later in Vancouver and has since returned to, to England, a well-traveled boat. Now, the fact that he would track something that he sold to a well-known dealer um, and that it would then reappear shows that it's not just like any old thing. It's something that he obviously thinks highly of. Um, so I think I've got a nice thing. I didn't pay much for it. Um, doesn't look as nice. I mean, this has got, this might have been restored or something. Even this might be a restoration, this base bit. But anyway, um, I think I've got a good thing for my money. Um, I'm very happy with it. And it looks, looking at these designs, looks to be by the same hand as mine. So it's probably from the same manufacturer. 
So this book we're looking at is The Decanter Ancient to Modern. There is only one paper mache um, jolly boat in here and it's this one here. But, you know, the one I have is nicely painted and everything. But to show you what kind of material paper mache was considered, that it was not an inferior material, this one has silver fittings on it. Um, and it's hallmarked uh, 1802. So you've got a date with this paper mache boat as well. This one is more like a proper boat with a proud, uh, whatever they call the back, I can't remember at the moment. But anyway, um, yeah. So it shows you it's not really an inferior material or wasn't considered at the time to be, but this is the only one in this book. The others are silver. And he's also got some carts and things. Yeah, there's a, oh, there's, a, there's another one there actually. Didn't realize that it's a, it's actually a boat with wheels on. Um, so yeah, the, I, I have some stands in here as well. So well, let's go find that page and I'll show you those. So he's got two stands in this. He's actually really showing you the decanters, they're colored ones. Um, but these are similar to what I have. I have a couple of wooden ones that are like this as well, which I'll show you when I think. Um, and the date he's given on these is 1800 for these two wooden uh, paper mache stands. He said both of them are paper mache. Um, so yeah, so there you go. I think that's all on here. I don't think there's any coasters. No, there's boxes and things. So anyway, um, so there you go. That's what I have as far as references go. So there we have it. I do realize that sometimes you were just looking at my chest. I'm sorry about that, but I'm playing with this. Um, and I thought, seeing as it's not glass, you know, we can see out here in daylight and everything. Um, and um, yes, yeah, so I thought I'd come out into extension and um, do a video out here rather than in my usual pit where I'm absolutely surrounded by my, my, my jewels. But anyway, um, what else? Yeah, so to wind this up, the references, the two books I use will be in the description below. Um, and I think that's it. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And uh, please remember to like and subscribe because it does really help my channel. And I think that's it. So. Thank you. Good night.